So good to be with you guys today. Thanks for following along to the YouTube channel. It's been something that's been a passion of ours for a while, but to bring it to life and to see the new subscribers and everyone who's hanging out here, I love you. Thanks for watching. Today, we're going to be talking about how to have a healthy marriage while being a business owner. So I'm an entrepreneur. My husband is an entrepreneur. That is very rare, uh, but it is true. And generally there's the one entrepreneur and the other maybe stay at home mom or stay at home dad or the other person who just works a quote unquote normal job, whatever that is. Any, anyhow, I don't know. I believe everybody has an element of entrepreneurial spirit because we're all connected to a creator who created us. And so even if you're an entrepreneur, be creative, stay true to your identity, and don't just like punch the clock, okay? That's a side note, the side rant. Healthy marriage. Oh my goodness. I just had the opportunity this year to remarry my husband. After 10 years, we decided we needed to have a new exchange of vows. I wanted to wash his feet and I wanted to pour into him. I want to exchange new rings. I wanted our, our children to witness it. And this isn't because it's been Peachy King. It's because it's been the opposite. And I've been anxiously, anxiously awaiting to marry him again for the past about six years. Every year I was like, gosh, I can't wait to marry you again. And we just wanted to wait until we felt whole and we felt like we were actually living out a healthy marriage. And it wasn't just something that we were still every day, like feeling like we had pitfalls and every day needing to sharpen something. Now, mind you, every day marriage is work. <laughs> every day, especially as an entrepreneur, marriage is work but works out of love, works out of surrender, not works out of expectation or works out of um, effort. It, it's more of a being. It's in our identity that we get to be married. It's in our identity that we get to exist in love. That is the ground zero of our relationship. And to know that we get to show up as 100% of self, 100% of self, overflowing when we come together and God who is 100% whole as the cord of three strands, right? You might've seen that in a wedding ceremony or it's also biblical scripture that he tightens it all because you can't break it easily, right? Versus two, you could break easily, you can untether cannot untether the one strand from the three strands. And so I'm going to go down a list of five things to have a healthy marriage while being a business owner. I pray that whichever one really speaks to your soul as an area of conviction, that you would say yes, and you would go on that journey and exploration together. And sometimes to recognize that together is not always an option. Sometimes we get to get to don't have to do things in our own in our own individual exploration and surrender. I remember in a time of our marriage where I did something called the husband project and it was a 30 day challenge. You can get this book if you're a female. There's also a male one, I think, um, but it's a challenge where it allows you to for 30 days without telling your spouse, do small acts of kindness every single day seems silly. Maybe you could do it on your own, but I'm telling you how this book nurtures you is on point. So on target with the things that your flesh and your natural eye are seeing or not seeing like the lack of gratitude or the lack of connection, even though you're doing these things that the person doesn't know about. So here is, are the five things. And I encourage you to know that sometimes you get to do them together and sometimes you have to do them by yourself, but such as entrepreneurship, it feels like a solopreneurship sometimes. Um, but that's going to be a conversation too, of how you can come together and not be in a silo as the entrepreneur in your household. So number one, victory is submission. This is, I need to like paint this on our wall because we talk about it all the time. Is the, is it the answer or the desire to be right more important than the answer the desire to love? question. Are you the person who always wants to be right? Do you wear the pants in the family? Are you the person who's like my way or the highway? Are you the end all be all? Do you get the final say? Are you the seal of approval? Whether you're a man or a female, what, whoever I'm speaking to in this moment, it's the knowing that it's not always one way or the other way. We know that there is multiple ways to do something, especially when we're being led in the spirit. That's really who we need to listen to, not ego. So if victory is submission, you who say, you know what? I don't need to win this battle. Uh, let's go with your idea this time. Uh, uh, I'm going to actually surrender and tell you the truth in this moment, even though it's hard for me. And I'm going to lean into victory. 
because together in my surrender in your surrender we get to show up and we get to thrive together because no one's trying to outwin or outspeak vocalization in marriage is super important who is the one who's always talking victory is submission quiet that mouth right <laughs> victory is submission so silent and listen two words have the exact same letters I know they say you have one mouth and two ears for a reason, but silent and listen. Ooh, that's like another caliber, right? So victory is submission. And ultimately in surrender, are you pursuing rightness, ego, or are you pursuing Jesus? His answer, the spirit's answer. Number two, common mission. So as entrepreneurs, we have a mission. It's generally for our business and we have goals that we set maybe by ourselves or with our team members. Do you communicate those to your spouse? And if you don't, we're gonna talk about communication here in a minute. Why not have a root family mission together with your children even? A mission that allows you to go out and then do the next layered experience, which is your entrepreneurial investment. Home ministry first, always. Marriage ministry first, always. And I say that it's because it's connected to God, obviously God first, right? He is the head, but then it's this knowing that home, he is a part of the home because he's a part of the heart. And then therefore we activate in the next mission. So our family mission and our family values, our core values are connected to the mission and the value in which I operate and generate money and serve missions and all of that out of. If it's different, that should be a red flag. If it's different, that means it, it's gonna be really hard for you as the entrepreneur to feel like you're connecting with your spouse if they don't understand what your mission is. It should be something that you're doing together collectively, even if they don't work in your business. My husband and I don't necessarily have, the, uh, we have different businesses. We don't necessarily work together. I don't, I'm not employed. He's not employed by one or the other, but we are constantly ideating and generating and, and working together in the holding of space for things when they go wrong or celebrating when things go right because we're on mission together. And so we can ask questions, which is the number three, ask questions, communication, so important. Not how was your day? Who did you help today? What was your most dynamic conversation? What do you wish could be better tomorrow? What do you need from me right now to make your day easier? How can I help you today? My husband asked me that every single morning. Is there anything I can do for you today? He says, but the days that I actually ask and he gets to serve me in that way, acts of service is one of my love languages. So again, you need to know this to have a healthy marriage. What are your love languages? We're going to add that right now. Your love language is a part of how you communicate and how you love them even when you're apart. Okay. So I, I travel a lot for my job. And my husband and I are away from each other. I'm away from the kids generally once a month, sometimes two times a month. And it's really hard for us to stay connected unless we're asking really good questions, like I said, or we know each other's love language. He loves words of affirmation. So if I can just send him a message telling him I'm thinking about him, pray over him even, and let him know that like, God, I just am so grateful for you. You're such an amazing father. Thank you so much for doing and being and getting on their eye level and all of these things that you do. I am amazed by you as a dad. It's so sexy, right? Like there has to be playfulness. A healthy marriage is connected to play. And so recognize that the love languages, especially if one of your love languages is physical touch, like gear up for that as an entrepreneur, especially as a female entrepreneur, it is so hard to like be ready for playtime, if you will, <laughs> intimate time, because I'm like, oh, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. My mind is spent. I've talked for like eight hours on lives and trainings and teaching and podcasts. I'm tired. And so I, one, will intentionally plan for that time. And we'll also have some foreplay with our words throughout the day. Play together more. Play with your words. Play with your time. Play with, be careful in what you text each other because you're around other people. Okay. Play smart. But this is important. It's an, and it's a connection to love languages. So that's number four love languages. And number five is seasonal sacrifice. In order to have a healthy marriage as a business owner, you have to know that there are going to be seasons in your business where one person is going to do more than the other. I had a season where my husband was hard in the paint towards his growing his business. And we were getting out of hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt because we were trying to keep our marriage alive. 
that was a precursor. Then there was that debt season, the debt uh, comeback season where I was a stay at home mom. I took the kids everywhere. I was actually working at their school, even though I didn't want to work there, but it was, it paid the bills and I was able to be with the kids. And I didn't really know what all God was doing in me at that time, as far as what my purpose was. So I was still exploring and it was easy. I could like leave work and, and still be a really good mom and a really good wife. And he was leaving us in the middle of meals. He was gone on the weekends. He was not able to come to every birthday party or mom outing or any of those things. I felt like I was constantly alone, to be honest. But we did a lot intentionally together. And we did that in the times when we could, when the kids were sleeping or um, we get date nights, weekly date nights were huge for us. And now I'm in a season where I'm the one who's like, no, I gotta go. And we see each other because we communicate, because we surrender. And it's not about victory or winning. It's about us winning souls. Ultimately, that's what our missions are as a family. It's like, let's go win souls today. And it doesn't matter what your baseline mission statement is for your company, though mine is obviously centered around obliterating shame and activating purpose, which ultimately points people to Jesus. He does HVAC. So how is he winning souls? Oh, that's another story for another day. So number two is the common mission. Number three is communication. Make sure you're asking really good questions. Number four is love languages. And number five is seasonal sacrifice. I really hope that this helps you. We actually, as a company and as a couple, are going to be hosting some marriage retreats and moving forward. And so we hope that you take a look at that and maybe join us internationally because international travel is huge for us, getting out of our hustle and bustle here and getting in with intentionality into other cultures and seeing what is possible for you and your marriage. So check it out. Otherwise, if you're a mom or a woman and you just need that reset, there are women experiences. If you're in the season where your husband doesn't get it and he's not on mission with you and you want to build yourself up to come back to that 100% full, maybe you're fully depleted. We have women's retreats and same for men's retreats. So please be sure to subscribe, follow for more information like this associated to home front, house, head, handbag, man bag, whatever it is, we want to equip you. That is our job to equip our leaders, our ministers in the marketplace. And that's who you are as an entrepreneur. Love you. Chat soon.